We also need to add a message decoder. So I do a new Java class and we create a message decoder class. The decoder again implements an interface. And in this case, we implement again decoder dot text. And again, it'll be text of type message. So it's a message decoder that's going to decode message type messages. Again, we bring in the appropriate namespaces for this and implement the appropriate methods. So again on here, we have an init method and a destroy method that we need to do nothing with. But then we have two other methods. We have a will decode method. And this basically asks us, are we able to decode the text we've been given? And then a decode method. And the decode method actually takes the incoming text and decodes it into a message and returns that message. For both of these, let's just change these types to be MSG. I prefer that name to simply using S. And then we can write the implementation. So the implementation of the decoder is more complex than the encoder. We have to check first of all to see if the incoming message is indeed in JSON format. In our case, that's all we'll do. If it's in JSON format, we'll say that we can decode it. We then have to take that JSON message, look at the type of the message, and then based on that type, decode it to the appropriate Java type. So we'll decode first of all. So in here, we'll use something called JSON. So JSON comes from the Java, JavaX JSON packages, so one of the standard Java classes. And using JSON, we can call create reader to read the message. We're going to pass this thing a new string reader. And we pass that string reader the incoming message. So we, want to simply, want to, we simply want to parse that message. If that succeeds, we'll just return true. If that fails, it will throw an exception. And the exception it's going to throw is a JSON exception. So we'll simply handle that exception, and if the call fails, return false. So it's quite simple. If we can parse the message, then we'll say that we can decode it. We'll go no further than that. And if we can't parse the incoming message, then we'll fail and say, no, sorry, we can't decode this. For the decoding itself, notice that the decoder returns something of type message. So let's create that first of all. So we'll have message, message equals null. And at the end of this, we'll return that message. To decode this, we first of all need to say, can we decode the message? So if will decode, passing it the message, So we now know that we can decode the message. So we need to do that. So the steps for doing this are to first of all create something called a JSON object and then look in there to see if there's a, an integer value named type and then to get the value, the value of that type. So decoding this is a multi-step process. We first of all need to take the incoming message and turn it into a JSON object. So JSON object is part of the standard Java JSON processing classes. We then take that object and look to see if it has a field called type. And if it has the field, get the value of that field. And it's the value of that field that will be the type of our message. So for example, three will be the get users message. Once we have that field, we then know we can decode this incoming message into the correct message type that we want. So either a join message or a chat message or a get users message. And that will be the last step of the processing. So our code will look something like this. So we'll create something called a JSON object called obj. Bring in the import the classes for this. So we have JSON object object. And this is equal to JSON dot again create reader. We'll pass this a we'll pass this a string reader. We'll pass the string reader our message. But at this point, we now call read object. And read object will return a JSON object.
JSON objects have methods to allow us to access data within the object we've just deserialized. So for example, I can call obj.getInt, and to get int, I pass it the name of the field inside the object, which in our case will be type. So we could say something like int type equals obj.getInt. The value we get back here will be the type of message. So when we saw inside the chart view model, we had these types, we had join, message, get users, etc. We need to do the same thing inside the decoder. So inside the decoder, we'll add some constants that define these types. So join message is one. These, are, these map onto the constants from the JavaScript world. So in our decode method, we need to do the appropriate processing based on the type of the incoming message. So we can add a switch statement, and we can say switch on type. And then inside the switch statement, we want a case based on the message type. So our case is going to be based on get users message. That's the first message, remember, that was sent by the browser. So inside here, we need to add the code to process this string message and turn it into the appropriate Java type of message. We do that by going back to the Jackson code. So in Jackson, we had something of type object mapper. An object mapper will map from JSON into Java. So we can say object mapper mapper equals new object mapper. Again, importing the appropriate types. So once we have the mapper, we can say message equals mapper, and we call mapper.read value to get the data out of here. And we pass mapper.read value, the string that contains the message. Then we have to tell it what to convert this into. So in this case, we're going to pass it a get users message dot class. So say convert this thing to the appropriate class. We need to surround all of this in a try catch. And in this case, we'll simply catch any exception. And just print out the stack trace. And if we get an exception, we're simply going to return null as the message. If we don't get an exception, then message will be set to whatever we decode here. And we should return the correct message type to the caller. OK, so let's see if this works. So we'll put a breakpoint inside on message, go to the message decoder. And we have a, we have a breakpoint set on the decode method. If I go to the browser and simply refresh, then we've hit a breakpoint inside idea. And sure enough, we've hit the decode section. If we step over this, so will decode returns true, and we end up with a JSON object. And if we look at that object, we'll find, if we expand this, it's a collection of name value pairs, and there's a key of type, which is just the field on the object with a value of three, which is what we expect. If we keep stepping, so we get the type out of here, we switch on the type, and then we try and read the value using the mapper to get this message back. We can step again, and we should now have a message. And sure enough, we have a message of type get users message. And if I leave this code run, we hit our broadcast. So we hit the on message handler. It's going to finally call broadcast and leave it run again. And that message has now been sent to all the, all the users. So we can now add some of the other messages. So let's go and add into here a new Java class. And this will be our join message. And the join message will simply have a name. And this will be the name of the user who's trying to join the call. So that will look something like this. And we can also add a chat message. So we do new, again, new Java class. And this will be a chat message. And the chat message will be the message sent from the browser that contains the data for the chat. So it'll be the name of the person sending the message, the maybe the time of the message was sent, and, actual, and the actual data that is the chat message. So, you know, hello, Bob, hello, world, whatever that chat message might be. 
And again, just to paste this in, this will look something like this. So now that we have these, we can extend our decoder. So we can now decode these other messages. So this will all be very similar. So here, rather than a get users message, we'll have a join message. And then rather than get users message class, we'll have a join message class. Similarly for the chat message, so rather than get users message here, we'll have a chat message. And then rather than the get users message class, we'll have a chat message class. And we should now be able, to be able to process the join chat and the get users messages. Now that we have this in place, we'll need to change our endpoint so, so that it processes the messages correctly. So when the user asks to join, we save that user away. When the user sends a chat message, we save that chat message away in a list. And when the user asks for all the users, we return the messages and so on and so forth. So that processing now needs to be done.